Hello folks! Most of all my cordless power tools are made by Bosch and powered by 18V batteries. I always wanted to have one long-lasting battery and decided to make it by upgrading old one. This one is faulty battery, which I bought for a few euros. Let's take it apart and take a look inside. As you could see, cells are totally dead, but that's okay, because from this battery I'll use only the housing and connectors. Made a copy of cell stabbing pattern and removed all cells out. This small square represents the state of charge indicator and indicates the front of battery. Those Samsung cells brand new was rated for 1500 mAh of nominal capacity. The main part of this build is 18650 lithium cells. I use Sony VTC6 cells which have 3120 mAh of nominal capacity. I choose them because they are able to give up to 3 amps of continuous discharge. For cordless power tools it is necessary high drain lithium cells capable handle 10 amps or 15 amps of continuous discharge at least. At the moment, Sony VTC6 18650 cells are the best price, capacity and performance combination in the market. That's why they are often used at electric bike, bicycle, scooter, longboard, power tools or other applications where high amperage and high energy density is needed. As always, in the market are a lot of knockoffs. So, it is quite easy to get not what you are paid for. Mine cells came from gearbest.com and I can confirm that they are authentic. There are a lot of information on the internet how to identify fake Sony VTC6 cells. Just type in Google fake Sony VTC6 and you get a ton of information. I leave a link in video description of this product in case you want to get them too. Slided all new cells in battery holder regarding drone pattern. To connect cells, I'll use Arduino spot welder and 0.50mm pure nickel strips. I want to share my thoughts about this awesome Arduino spot welder. I got it from mailelectrics.eu. I leave a link in video description to Mailelectrics online shop. I don't make a review video about this welder, because that was already done by manufacturer. I leave that link in video description too. Spot welder came well packed, included all needed parts to make it run except power source. So, I got a spot welder, 300 amp fuse, 3D printed housing for welder and fuse, welding and extension cables, and foot switch. Pre-built kit is well designed and assembled. Soldering quality looks very good too. I think you could expect that of product that was made in Germany. This spot welder could be powered by car battery or lipo battery. I'll use lipo battery because of its size and ability to use in my other projects. From one extension wire and additionally bought XT90 connector, I made this wire adapter to connect 3S LiPo battery. Assembling process is pretty straightforward. All you need is to attach spot welder to power source, secure welding cables, attach fuse, solder fan and spot welder power wires, and put all together in 3D printed housings. At seller website you can find detailed instructions how to do it in case you have some issues. What's great about this product that it is continued project. We have well support and all time are in development regarding users feedback. This is Arduino spot welder version 3. But since I got it there was made few hardware and software updates and now there are version 3.1. Spot welding process is very simple. 
cut nickel strip pieces and regarding all battery typing layout, spot welded them in place. As I mentioned before, I used 0.50mm of thickness and 7mm width nickel strip and spot welded them using 25 milliseconds of pulse time. I used the lead welding function for 2 seconds, that means I got automated spot weld after 2 seconds when welding tips are pressed on the nickel strip. If you don't have a spot welder, I'll recommend to consider to get one. It is a very useful device, especially if you are playing a lot with batteries and battery packs. Or you could do it in old-fashioned way, just solder cells with a soldering iron. I made two parallel strips between each group in series. That was needed to ensure good connection, low resistance and low temperature while draining a lot of current. To connect positive and negative terminals, I bended nickel strip like this, inserted wire in a loop and spot welded strip in place. After that, solder the wire to nickel strip. Checked voltage to be sure that everything was connected properly. Looks good. So, assembled everything back. And the last touch, actual battery capacity number. Battery is charging with the original charger and finally confirms that my build was successful. And the main question, does it worth it all that effort to change cells? Yes, it was, because brand new Bosch 18 volts 6 amp hours battery cost twice than 10 pieces of Sony VTC6 cells. I hope this video was helpful. If you are first time here, please hit that subscribe button for upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.